and when it comes to managing the money what the kind of behavior that we see is that okay don't let the money stay in my savings account i will spend it either as a kid i've got whatever i wanted or if you look at it i've been deprived of whatever i wanted mm. whereas investing is a very uncertain science yeah you have lot of assumptions you're talking about so many years into the future mm. where we don't know how things will pan out inflation is going to change taxes are going to change your own life is going to change now if i've seen my parent behave impulsively either i follow or i do this opposite of that yeah other side we also see lot of people uh, just swiping their cards without figuring out mm. how will they pay it when the due date comes mm-hmm. and that is leading to a debt trap what's your personality type No I'm not talking about your zodiac sign and what that tells you I'm talking about the science of the human mind and there are several theories that have emerged over the years to classify human personalities a popular one by Myers and Briggs talks about 16 types but the reason I'm asking you to consider what your personality type is that it could have a bearing on how you interact with money and how you spend and invest My guests today are Dr. Anjali Chhabria, practicing psychiatrist, and Kiran Telang, author and financial planner. And over the course of this conversation on big decisions, we're going to be talking about personality types in money and also investing biases that you should be aware of. Let's start with what I think will be a very fascinating conversation. First of all, thank you so much for taking the time and for speaking to us on big decisions. I'll start with you, doctor. Sure. Let's talk about personality type because this A study that I read takes the 16 personality types and clubs it into four buckets, which is broadly mm-hmm. into one which is more spontaneous, one which is more risk averse, one which is empathetic, which donates a lot of money, and the last which is more rational in the way that they spend. They spend towards a particular goal. Is it that easy to classify though? See, human beings cannot be definitely classified into four types. Mm. okay but this is just one way maybe to explain to people what is happening and these are some personality traits mm. that may come together mm. you know for example if you're a perfectionist mm. okay then you will overthink and over assess and over analyze a problem mm. okay and uh, maybe you'll do it even where your spending is concerned mm. So for everything you will rationalize and you will say no no is this necessary is this what i want is this something that i have to do now mm. or do i have to do it later mm. and maybe if you have a spouse who will say what is this you know let's just go ahead mm. you always wanted to buy that car or buy that house mm. and here you are you know so depending on that of course uh, one can make some assumptions mm. but everything was not going to be you know so okay but for the purposes of this conversation mm. broadly and i right. understand that there yeah. are so many theories that you yes. might be able to talk about let's break this down first of all into these four buckets just to give people a sense and i'm sure kiran can weigh in on how to fix certain problems that might em- emerge because right. of traits that you might have now the first one that i was reading has to do with people that are more spontaneous with the kind of spending that they might have Uh, the example that I read in the study is: you see a Jimmy Jimmy Choo bag and you decide to buy it. You don't really look at your bank balance; you just go right. and spend. Right. Right. Uh, can you talk about the traits that would normally be associated with this kind of behavior? So, see, either, either it is new money. Hmm. Okay. Either there is impulsive spending, which is happening. Either this is something I've always wanted as a child, hmm. and today I've reached the stage where I can go and buy it. Mm. you know either i am one of those people who gets influenced by things around me mm-hmm. you know so it could be a combination of so many factors either as a kid i've got whatever i wanted or if you look at it i've been deprived of whatever i wanted mm. so just depending of course on the situation there is know, peer pressure though of absolutely and if i am one who is on social media and who wants to see what are the bags and who's carrying what and how will i look you know and i go around also with this group of friends mm. you know who every time they're talking about bags and shoes etc you know and and again i am someone who wants to be a part of this mm. you know i could be having a little bit of fomo also hmm. so there are so many factors you know which get your confidence your inner confidence your childhood 
you know, and everything comes into play. And there are a few aspects that we will talk about in just a bit, but from a financial planning standpoint, if you are an impulsive person, if you are spontaneously making uh, decisions with regard to swiping your card or, or, or purchasing something, it's not necessarily a great thing for your finances, but then you can do that, Kiran, if you're taking certain other things into account, yeah? Yeah, so actually what uh, Dr. Anjali was saying is very interesting, you know, the peer pressure and mm -hmm. the wanting to belong to a certain set and, mm -hmm. you know, all those things come into play. And when it comes to managing the money, what the kind of behavior that we see is that, okay, don't let the money stay in my savings account, I will spend it. Mm -hmm. That comes very often, you know, people just want to take it away from their account, otherwise if they see it, they will end up spending it. Mm -hmm. So that is one part of it. Uh, other side, we also see a lot of people uh, just swiping their cards without figuring out mm. how will they pay it when the due date comes. Mm -hmm. And that is leading to a debt trap. You know, so those issues are creeping up because of, of all these psychological factors. What's the fix though? So uh, I think what can be done is twofold. One is you create a discipline of first attending to your long-term goals. Mm. So keep that money aside. So you are assured that in future you have some nest egg ready mm. for whatever goals you have on the other side what we can also do is uh, keep a spending kitty separate mm -hmm. that you have this amount of money which you're going to spend nobody's going to ask you anything about it and you're happy about it mm. so both ways whatever works with you i think uh, can be a good idea you know so that you're not guilty about that spending and you don't end up in trouble mm. either in the short term because of the credit cards not being paid on due date or in the long term when the goals come up and you are short of money. I think that credit card spending is a separate conversation altogether because there's so much to unpack Absolutely. there. Uh, but spontaneous behavior, and, and you mentioned peer pressure, we'll talk about that in just a bit, but the second group of individuals that are more risk averse, uh, you're more conscious, you're more frugal of, about the spending that you have, and this is where peer pressure might not that jar is. you or yes. affect you right. that much. Right. What personality type can you describe? So, you know, these are people uh, who may be overthinking and overanalyzing everything that they do. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, such people we also see that maybe they have a perfectionistic tendency in mm -hmm. them, you know, so they want to be all proper. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to see whether you deserve to spend. Mm -hmm. You know? They, they, they yes, deserve to spend. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So they self-esteem also may be a little low mm. you know because it's like every time or they could be having a parent who's been very strict with them mm. you know that do you really deserve this do you really want it are you really going to need it you already have two pens why are you buying a third mm. pen you know so because of that they've been harsh on themselves also you know and these are people who may also be excessive worriers and overthinkers mm -hmm. You know, so they've also been, uh, you know, sometimes we see people who have obsessive tendencies. But this is different from obsessive compulsive. No, no, no. This is just a personality type. Okay. You know, okay. that you're obsessing about everything, hmm. you know, and combine that with a low self-esteem. Hmm. And then you say, no, 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 you know, and they learn to delay their impulses. Which is not necessarily a terrible thing, but then too far or too much of a good thing, right? Yeah, no. So what happens with such people is that they're constantly depriving themselves or putting it off to a later date. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll do this. I'll buy myself a car only when I have done this. Only if I do this. Mm. You know, or even if they buy things, they will not use it. It'll just be lying there waiting for that perfect day. So I, I do know? have a question about the personal finance angle of this, yeah. but before we get to that, I want to ask about this because these are tendencies that people have based on their personality yes. type and very often you have very little control over these things, right? Uh, how do you fix that? Because this can either one uh, be a symptom of certain issues that you might yes. be facing yes. or it may be a precursor to bigger issues down the line. So is identifying it the first step of the problem? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is why mental health and mental health professionals come into the picture. Psychologists, you know, a lot of people are coming in for therapy mm. these days because they are either identifying these issues themselves or their friends bring it up or mm. your relationship. Mm. You know, and today friends are like siblings. You know, so when people bring it up and say, but why are you being so stingy with yourself? Mm. 
you know that's when you start thinking and you you know then when you come to a therapist you sit with them and understand what is your personality type yeah. or on the other hand if you're someone who just sees something and impulsively you buy it whether you can afford it or not mm. you know that is also a problem that is also a problem yeah because is impulsivity a sign of something bigger sure you know i mean there are some people who may be having uh, symptoms of attention deficit disorder yeah you know so for them it's like what they see is what they want yeah you know and even if they get it they may just keep it aside and not use it at all and this is all uh, doctor i have learned this so you maybe yeah. maybe you correct me about this this is all spectrums that we're talking about right Absolutely. it's not we don't look at this in black and white not at all and that is why you need a professional so sure. it's not just one symptom sure okay it could be a trait yeah you know and impulsivity could be a trait that is running in my uh, you know in all my in my genes sure so i've seen my parent behave impulsively yeah now if i've seen my parent behave impulsively either i follow or i do this opposite of that yeah that's you true know? so okay we've talked about spontaneity uh, this is the opposite end of that and people delaying gratification to the point that it actually is harmful for them and i would think that such people who are risk averse and warriors as doctor pointed out would also be worried about say for example investing in equity where you're worried that your capital is going to be lost as a result of which i think people stay away from the equity markets to their detriment is that true kiran so i would uh, bring it out in a more broader manner i think this uh, obsessive personality what the uh, doctor was describing uh, would probably want certainty mm-hmm. whereas investing is a very uncertain science yeah you have lot of assumptions you're talking about so many years into the future mm. where we don't know how things will pan out mm. inflation is going to change taxes yeah. are going to change yeah. your own life is going to change mm. so all these changing parts together can uh, totally change what has been put on paper as a financial plan vis-a-vis what actually turns out so what is required in such situations is ideally tweaking your plan as you go along so mm. planning is more important than creating the plan mm. so the plan fails the moment it's actually on paper and unless you keep on tweaking it you know it has to be tweaked to your certain circumstances mm. uh, now coming to the equities bit that you spoke about mm. Uh, i think uh, most of these savers who would want that certainty will be afraid of equities yeah. because there is so much volatility so much uncertainty mm. and they cannot probably envision uh, the kind of wealth that can be created on a long term basis through investing in uh, assets like equities mm. so they might want to keep away from that kind of investments mm. and that could lead to problems see you can't have everything into uh, fixed assets which yeah. have can a certain I buy gold and keep it or uh, you can but that is obviously going to impact on the long term because gold again is an asset class which might perform for a very short time and it might not do anything for so many years you know mm. so there could be uh, issues in future <coughs> where you need certain amount of money because inflation obviously reduces your purchasing power mm. and if you don't have any investment which is beating that inflation you will fall short of your money so unless your resources are so large that you don't really bother about the kind of returns so that you make this is an important question that doctor asked because people automatically associate certain asset classes with safety and security Absolutely. and that may not necessarily be the case but to the point of asset allocation and what people should idly follow of course they need to identify based on their own risk assessment but there are thumb rules to follow Uh, and the easiest of which is what they say about the age right you talk about the metric of 100 Correct. minus your age and you're talking about that much associated or the 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 difference between 100 and your age being what you put in equity right usually is usually, that is, i would say that is just the thumb rule it uh, see circumstances are different now let me take an example uh, what would you say to an 80 year old Hmm. so 20% in equity but that 80 year old has a corpus of 50 crores yeah so it's practically so it impossible make, to do yeah it doesn't really make any sense to put that much money into debt probably hmm. what uh, he or she is creating is generational wealth mm-hmm. so why keep it into uh, low earning assets so what is the answer then kiran so it has to be uh, done for each individual each family on the basis of their circumstances mm-hmm. so what are they what of your, why of your money is more important you the know why. why are you investing and in saving mm. so if that question is answered 
the plan and the investments follow yeah. and obviously that has to be built in what uh, uh, of their risk profile you know and what is their psychological tendencies about what doctor was talking yeah. so they are built in a certain way they don't want to take certain decisions or yeah. they don't want to go in a particular direction that yeah. is fine but as long as you are able to answer the why of investing i think that puts lot of things in place all right but there are two couple more personality types that we have to take through very quickly because we also have to talk mm -hmm. about investing biases the first one has to do with those people that give their money away not many people are of those uh, around to to be fair but then there right. are people who focus on others before they focus on themselves these are Uh, people that are called empaths and there's a last group of people that are more rational about the kind of spending that they have where very specifically they say i will only spend if it is achieving a certain goal if for example i have to buy a car i won't buy a car because i need to have mm -hmm. a car you know i don't want to show it off if i'm getting to work faster it's having a purpose i will buy a car what can you say about those two so see when you talk about somebody being empathetic okay of course that depends on again which stage of your life you mm. are on okay so if you know you've kind of finished the maslow stage of roti kapda makan that you need sure now you've done you with your savings and then after that you say okay why am i saving all this money let me start giving it away let me involve it in causes self actualization okay self actualization <laughs> so that is of course a certain part of the personality then you have personalities who are really scared yeah. that all this wealth is coming to me because of some good so let me do good sure and that's why i may give it for religious purposes or social causes, uh, social causes sure. you know so it, it so if it's coming from fear you know that's actually a negative personality mm. if it's really coming from self actualization and saying okay i want to do good or i want to donate 10% of my earnings or whatever they may come to you and know then all, of course we guilt that's a lot bad. of inherited so fear have that uh, feeling that's that bad. it's not what i have earned it's only i have inherited and probably Absolutely. i don't yes own. so fear and guilt comes into a little bit of you know these are people who suffer because they feel that oh if i don't do this i really deserve bad, this or yes. did i deserve this yeah yes you know that they don't think they deserve it and two is uh, if i don't do something maybe something bad will happen hmm. to me that's okay. why i'm giving so i don't it. think that there's any uh, real answer to this per se but hmm. maybe setting aside a certain amount of your funds based yeah. on your requirements and, and then saying you know make this makes you happy right and rather than you know giving out an ad hoc basis which might end up depending on the amount of resources that you're looking at it might end up bringing these people into trouble hmm. so have a set a uh, group of people or causes that you're donating to and uh, you have kind of a plan for that also sure. a philanthropy uh, plan you know whatever amount you want to give so that could probably uh, help in the long run and the last group of course is what financial planners dream of is people who spend towards a goal and so i don't think that there's any advice that is needed to so be given so i don't know i mean i would <laughs> ideally like everybody to be rational but i don't know whether that is possible because yeah. see they might be like you were giving the example of the car purchase you know mm -hmm. so they might be rational in one goal but there could be other emotions at play for other yes. things like yeah. a bigger purchase maybe a house so you could think differently there so i don't think any human being is totally rational at any point in time that's a fair point <laughs> let's see i mean I, i i recently wanted to buy a house because there was a beautiful tree there but we have to also talk about investing behavior because biases can come to play here as well and the most common ones are uh you know recency bias which we're seeing very often and i'm guessing some of my listeners and viewers have looked at the latest mutual fund data and uh, seen how much money is going to thematic funds i know that financial planners like yourself will say look be careful about those but then ultimately they've been doing really well and so recency bias comes into play so i think uh, at certain points financial planning is more about behavior management uh, more than anything <laughs> else because uh we have to get uh, the investors back to why did we plan in certain manner yeah. what is your asset allocation what is your risk profile yeah. so if you move away from these core aspects you will be tempted to uh, you know get into things which are uh, doing well now so that is a recency bias there is also herd mentality mm -hmm. so all my friends and my office people are doing this so why don't i jump into it it's not only uh, mutual funds or financial assets i would also say even in property purchases i mean mm. i have seen people 
uh, buying small commercial properties, you know, because everybody in their office is doing the same thing. So, uh, I mean, really, is it required? Is it a part of the big picture that you've created for yourself? So those uh, biases are there and you always need to go back to the basics. Is there a psychological tendency here? So, see, of course, there is a herd mentality and, you know, people always belong to a larger group. Okay, and then you have friends and you trust them and you trust their judgment. Also, sometimes, you know, if I don't have confidence, but I think that, you know, she is a more confident person or she is more intelligent than me, then mm -hmm. I would like to go by her judgment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is where you're looking at a general population. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about impulsive, okay, then there are certain disorders also sure. which make you more impulsive. Yeah, okay. You know? So, so fair point. But there are a couple more that I want to also hit. And one is your, uh, your accounting bias where you're, you're calculating things, mental accounting bias, right? Where you're calculating things in your head and it's not necessarily what it actually is. How does that work? So uh, people generally tend to keep certain amount of money uh, for a certain purpose, you know. Mm. So that helps actually in a way to discipline also. Uh, it's a little difficult to think of money as fungible, you know. So you have a portfolio that is all money. Mm. So you can use any bit of that money for any purpose. Mm. But if you tag one bucket as this is for my child's education, you will be less tempted to pull money out sure. of there. You know, so in certain uh, places that helps that you are not going to touch this part because this is for a certain purpose. Mm. Otherwise, you tend to uh, kind of fig uh, not be able to figure out when should you pull out or when the markets are running up, you just want to withdraw everything and sit on cash. Mm. So that doesn't work. So there the mental accounting actually helps. Mm. But otherwise, when you are just starting off, say you don't have any particular goals, mm. so then it is a fungible bracket. Then you don't really need mental accounting. It's just the wealth that you're creating for certain goals which you will realize along the way. What about anchoring as a bias? Oh, anchoring is a big thing because uh, you sit on your losses because you remember that particular stock or that particular value of your portfolio oh, and you man. don't want to get out of it. And I can imagine that that's a situation a lot of people are stuck in. Oh, absolutely. And get stuck I mean, it's easy. not only financial assets, even properties. Okay, my property mm. was quoting this and it's not quoting that anymore. So I will wait forever to so get out of it. how do you get out of that? So you just have to take a decision that losses have to be booked if you want to move ahead unless you take that loss and get out, you will not be able to utilize that money. That money is stuck there forever. It's difficult, it's very challenging, but it needs to be done. Okay, anything else that stands out in terms of biases that you would caution against? Uh, I think herd mentality is one which mm. is very, very important. We have already discussed that and that really plays a big picture. I mean, whatever we are seeing uh, in terms of even what happened abroad, you know, during uh, uh, COVID times where retail investors got together as a herd and uh, yeah, yeah. did certain uh, things. So that uh, plays a big role in your and Okay, portfolios. while it can galvanize you to invest, it may not always be it the best It may not thing. always be right for you. Yeah, so think about, think about what you want. So thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much, Kiran, for taking the time and for speaking yes. to us. Hopefully this conversation has been beneficial to people because as you pointed out, Doctor, identifying a problem or potential problem is the most important step along the journey of getting better. All right, and that brings us to the end of this edition of Big Decisions. I hope that it was beneficial to you. Let us know what you think in the comment section and also most importantly, let us know what you would like to be discussed on this platform. Thanks so much for listening. This is NDTV Profit.